Hello viewers, welcome back. Um, we were talking about the voters register and I want Charles to um, continue with where we left off about the voters register, how the ex, the, 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 the previous government did the register and the new government also tries to or is done it and they are in the process of complete. I don't know if they finish or not. So Charles, what do you think about that? Do you think it's a laudable idea for mm. which is ID to be done, done once you again. Know, yes. Again, because I, I think it should be updated, not to be redone like in that way. Mm. What do you think? Well, as I was saying to you, that uh, when a, a government comes into party, once again they're going to look at uh, you know in terms of obviously voters where you said they are they are looking at it to see if you know for example is there any uh, potential in there to cause electoral rigging? You know, you know. And maybe there could be ghost names, you know, there could be all sorts of things that they've probably discovered in the ones that was established under, uh, under Mahama, under the NBC, you know. And so I, I agree with you that even if you think that uh, it is not up to there the mark, uh, up to oh, the mark and they, have, they have a lot of discrepancies, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. then the proper thing to do is to just retain mm -hmm. that. And, and then it. and then update it so that you're probably calling individuals in to come in to fine. to re verify. That's mm -hmm. right. They need to come in with something to verify mm -hmm. uh, that they are such and such person. Mm -hmm. And then then you go through it like that. Then right. obviously okay. because we heard that there are some Togolese that were on the register. There were some Ivorians that were on the register. You know, all kinds of names were on the register. So Correct. as a matter of fact. As you were saying, so when you call when you call them back, yes. you are now going to notice if they that they don't report and then update. Then it means that they, they, clear, post, that they delete, post, we uh, delete that link the system. And I think I don't know if they've done proper system to have that data, mm -hmm. you know, that inclusive data, so that it, they keep updating it. Updating obviously younger people like, are going to become people are frustrated, uh, you know, going working because I was in Ghana last year. I drove all the way to a village. I, I don't even remember after mm -hmm. it's after Bekwai. It's, it's about I would say fifty kilometers. Okay. Fifty miles. Oh, wow. Yeah. And when we got there, they told us that the registration is over. No oh, dear. But somebody told us in Kumasi that the registration is going on mm. in that in that area. Mm. Yeah. But we, we drove all the way to that place. So all these and, type of inefficiencies. And yeah. we, we, we got there, they said, everything is, is over. Yes. And they told us that we should go to the Kumasi municipality. Yes. They said, a doom to go and check if they are doing the registration. We, we went there, there's no and reason. It. So it's, it's like they've got dates of doing it in certain areas. And mm. that is very confusing. Yes. So if you don't have that information and you drive all the way there, then you get enter. there and then you can get yes. register. Yes, in so reality, it's very, in reality it's, very, there, it's very frustrating. There has you know? to be a means of even communicating to maybe some hotlines. Yeah, to call so if, check, if you have to, you have to know travel. the dates. Mm -hmm. If you know the dates that they are doing the registration, when you get there, maybe you'll be registered. But if you don't know the dates and you get wrong information from others, you get there and then even, even there there. should be a line of communication whereby, you know, I mean, there are mobile phones everywhere. There are lines that you could set up in those specific areas, you know, any area that is carrying out this project. Mm -hmm. that people can just call and say, are you there today mm -hmm. or are you not? Or, you know, what is happening you there? 50 miles. Then, then you are wasting your Waste resources. All that petrol. Uh, only to get there and be told to come back. So, uh, so um, okay, can we go into the, the, the smart of the other presidents after? Yeah, that's right. We will we'll, 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 we'll we'll try to how well they did, you know, because uh, as a matter of fact, in Chroma out, our class you know, matched all yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. So, well, we'll try to be very brief. So, obviously, the um, Kutuka, Ankara, Afrifa, it was a transitional head of state sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Not that much happened. It was okay. just. A continuation of what Nkrumah was doing. So, what? Why did you remove him when you were going to continue with exactly what he was doing? Mm -hmm. You know. But fine. He, he, later on, as I said, a little bit of brainwashing, mm -hmm. and maybe it wasn't good. So, 
um, Kofi Abrefa Buzia and um, the uh, uh, father of our current uh, president, Kofi Abuzia, uh, serving as the prime minister, okay. and um, Akufu Adu also as the ceremonial president. I think the administration, Buzia was also known to be a very um, smart, clever man, well educated. Um, but I think. The, you know, the, the brain behind a lot of things that were going on was that Buzia was more tilted towards imported goods. You know, like the, the Milos, the Tina Pass and the milk and the conflicts and this type of thing. So Ghana started importing a lot. And I think um, at some stage that did upset the economy you know, some, Ghana. Some, yeah, yeah. And, and upset the local people as well because, you know, when you're not really consuming your local stuff, and then your import bills are going out and then you're probably spending a lot of your foreign reserves to you know import and all that so once again in terms of structural things the one couldn't say anything they're only in power for probably uh, two or less than three years so there was nothing significantly done and a champong came in with a coup to remove buzia because they were in the military were not happy so they removed him and when the champion came, also apparently. Ram and Kruma wrote to Buzia. Can you really hit on that letter? <laughs> because it was very touching, you know? Yes. He was telling him about how, yes. you know, he was being. Yes. It was a very, it was very yeah. personal. It was very yeah, personal. Yeah, very personal. And, um, I, letter. Think, I think in Kruma did highlight. Yeah. for his period that what the thing that, that what is good for the goose is good for the gander uh -huh. and then you know what they did to me now you are experiencing it Correct. and i'm happy for you you just you know stay there and make sure that everything is all right and all that yes yes, yes. In, in a way he was trying to be sarcastic as well yeah yeah he a lot of sarcasm <laughs> yeah Kroma was not happy mm -hmm. and then Kroma knew that that was not the but he was in exile so he was course. really bitter about the yeah. whole thing and that was not the idea. He didn't feel that the vision mm -hmm. that he had set, that they could carry that vision through, you see. And so, um, uh, lots of imports. And that is why a champong took Buzia out. Mm -hmm. And then, under a champong, it is interesting, um, even though it was a military head of state, but apparently he was a very, at the top, a champion was known, those who knew him in close circles, mm -hmm. he was known to be a kind of democratic within those circles. He was, that went in a panel, and uh, champo will always sit down and wait and have that collective view of the panel and use that to make decisions. So in reality, he wasn't a bad leader, you know, a champo. He did very well. So a champo's motto was grow what you eat and eat what you grow. And so he was encouraging that we don't depend on imports. That was it for to budget golf. Uh, yeah. uh, that was later on in, in, the, in the in the in the early stages when he was doing his work. He was you know pretty good to to, to be ahead of state for six head, for six years. Yes, he started but, his behavior. But a lot of the industries were um, collapsing uh, under capacity because. So it means that he's not the only president that did that slay queen style. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you see, that is that is later on. He's, he's not the only president. Uh, that is later on. But president in, in the slay idea. In the okay. early parts of his administration, yeah. mm -hmm. um, he was pioneering this, you know, self-sufficiency, mm -hmm. and even he will not even um, uh, honor the loans that Ghana had taken. Okay. And in a way, um, it, a, there is a good side to it on the basis of it kept borrowing very so nobody will loan money to ghana okay which in a, because the more debts you have the more problems you have and the more interest stakeholders take in your country your country yeah so it's a bit like uh, just a simple analogy it's a bit like having a house mm -hmm. without a mortgage and having a house with a mortgage mm -hmm. so in the champion era we have a house without a mortgage mm -hmm. so the house is our house Okay. But when you borrow too much, then it becomes a house with a mortgage. If the uh, the, mo the mortgage company is not happy, mm -hmm. they can co take the house back. Take the house back, yeah. So this is it's what like high purchase, isn't it? This is what happens to you when you're a country and you overextend. Mm -hmm. 
in borrowing, mm -hmm. then literally you are basically allowing uh, you know the people that are loaning you the money to come the in and power, take whatever they want the power yeah, yes they can come to, in and to, take whatever to, they to, want to yeah. Yeah, get involved with your mineral resources yeah. and also mm -hmm. you cannot deal fairly with them mm -hmm. because you know they, you owe them money yeah and so they you know and you they cannot be firm you know in firm, the decision yes. making watch out for the next series please subscribe like and then share thank you for watching Welcome back viewers, um, let's continue from where we left off. We were talking about the um, SMAP um, as to how the presidents of Ghana has really um, used the public purse into projects, yeah. projects in Ghana. So can you carry, off, um, carry, carry on from where you left off please? Uh, thank you Mr. Uh, Kweku. Uh, uh, great. So we came to um, 1972 to 78 under Ignatius uh, Kutuwa okay. uh, who was a head of state and the head of government. Um, under his tenure, he pioneered the idea that Ghana should not import. I think the whole idea of him removing Buzia from power was that he felt that the project where Nkrumah was trying to create that sort of real independence for, for Ghana where we are uh, maybe processing our cocoa into mm -hmm. chocolate and uh, you know yes processing most of our things into proper consumable goods okay. we were not doing that but then we started importing a lot so in his I his idea was that Ghanaians should grow what they eat and eat what they grow mm -hmm. and so uh, he also rejected to pay back the debts you know and so because of that we were not getting any more loans but as i made that analogy that the more loans you take the more insecurity or the less of an independence your country uh, could have you know because if your debt if your debt uh, what we call a gdb ratio gets very very high mm -hmm. it is not a good thing so under a champion we were not borrowing at all and I think the CD, if I remember vaguely, the CD was changing to about, it was about 275 CDs to a pound. Okay. It, was, it was that good. So a champo carried on like that. He did fairly well. Those who knew him in closer circle said that he was fairly democratic, obviously on his panel, mm -hmm. that he did listen to people. Uh, and he had very good security as well. But in a nutshell, coming up to the later stages of his administration, Obviously, these stakeholders that want Ghana to import, mm -hmm. once again, it's like the Nkrumathen came against Ghana again, said that Ghana started, the industry started to suffer because obviously we refused to pay back the loans and therefore, you know, sanctions. Uh, yeah, it, it was a bit like a very, yeah, yeah it was a very diplomatic sanctions. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, yeah, underground so sort of, yeah. So squeezed, you squeezed, you squeezed down tight, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And the champion, I think he was very, very stressed. And not only that, we also had, I think at the time, the OPEC oil crisis didn't help his administration because it, it created a, a, a global recession, which okay. Ghana was not neutral. Uh, from, from this, so Ghana also suffered. And I remember that Ghana also had a drought, and I remember that uh, at one point, a champion said, mm -hmm. I think people were um, worried, and their farms, you know, with the crops were Wasn't it the 83? No, 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 this, was, this that it's would have been, is, yeah, that would have been, 83, uh, well 83 also we had that, 83 runs, we yeah. had that major thing, but, under the uh, Champon one, there was definitely was that statement made, yeah. made that uh, you mm -hmm. know, this type of thing. And then at this stage, the high ranking, um, high ranking uh, uh, military were also probably enjoying too much with the market, rich market women. Mm -hmm. And so then that led to the foul to Veggie Golf incident. And so at that point, a Champon has started to lose a bit of ground in terms of him. You know, being the leader of Ghana, mm -hmm. 
and this is what so we that, that that sends us back to the leadership uh, crisis uh -huh. but in terms of when you when you were talking about um significantly you couldn't really point out anything that you could say he built an akosumbo dam or he built something or he built he was just like carrying on with the management of the country but at least the only thing that can be one could significantly be say is that he did not lead ghana into debts okay. our debts were limited mm -hmm. and we also had full control of our natural resources okay. he had not exposed ghana to that extent all right and so that so, so um, who, who was the next? The next was uh, um, uh, F. W. Ekufu, mm -hmm. who was also military. They staged a palace school very peacefully. Ekufu was just only one year in power, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Okay. And then obviously, then there was this thing with the Rollins. At that time, obviously, the low rank military uh, were not happy. Okay. And led by uh, an uh, attempted sort of coup by Rollins, okay. he was then arrested and. You know, they apparently removing his, torturing him, removing his fingernails with a plier, and then, which can be a very gruesome uh, uh, way. But Rollins, in, when they call like some sort of a court martial, and he spoke, mm -hmm. and I think that is what really, even the judges, uh, you know, they were shocked about the stuff that he said. What did he say? Uh, it was just, it was just, it's kind of quite <laughs> difficult to remember the details of what he said, but it was more along the lines that he was like, the, he led the, that op attempted Operation. coup, yeah. that, the, that the junior officers should be let free, that he's the only person that mm -hmm. sh they should hold accountable. Mm -hmm. And not only that, he spoke about the level of corruption and how... He was in prison, isn't it? Of course, of course, yes. <laughs> he was and tried, and then was, they, they had his finger removed, fingernails removed with the plier. Oh right! Yeah, and that that was a very gruesome. Um, uh, that is Rollins, right? Yes, of course. They did that to him. Yes, yes. My yes, God. yes, yes. <laughs> I remember. So yeah, you shouldn't forget that, these things. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this was very gruesome, and his speech was also it did touch right, the touching. people that yeah. were judging him because they could tell that he was telling the truth mm -hmm. that the economy of ghana was in, in, in shambles, abs absolute yeah. jeopardy mm -hmm. and a kind i think that generally the whole country was probably crying for some kind of a revolution yeah and so he became that leader they put him in the prison and some people felt that look this guy the way he's spoken let's go and remove him so the, apparently the Bwachi Jans and everybody claims that they are the one that removed Roland from that <laughs> prison yeah. but Bwachi Jan apparently is the one that organized but this. what happened to Bwachi Jan because apparently when Rollins came to power he also went to exile to exile of course of course yeah because the idea was that when they uh, obviously helped him out he was supposed to have exit obviously got gotten out of Ghana but he didn't and so there was a, a, a whole lot of friction, but this is a history for the people who were in the military. Yeah, <laughs> to talk about. To talk about, but a lot of people lost, lost their lives, and what was so very. So in fact, yeah, in fact, what so it means that um, Nkrumah did a lot. Mm -hmm. um, Buzia didn't do much. anything much. Yeah. The um, Ancres, Ancra, Kutuka, the Ankara, Kutuka, Afifa, non-existent. The champion just minimized the debt. Yes. And, and what about Rollins? Rollins, I think with Rollins, mm. um, one could say he was very young. I'm sure he would do things a lot differently now in his, uh, in his state of maturity. Because obviously you notice that most of the presidents that have come after Rollins are all very matured men. Yeah. men. So I'm very sure uh that he would do things differently today mm -hmm. but he was a very charismatic leader he was very light and um, but that intimidation and also you know the killing of the uh, former uh, president you know or head of state justice yeah head of state by the firing squad uh, created a whole lot of intimidation mm -hmm. so just went under rampage under his uh, leadership mm -hmm. i remember the case uh, in Kumasi when um, uh, when a lady was... So, so do you think 
Rollins sanctioned all the operations, the COVID operations, and even the ones that were out there that people know. I am doubtful that he would have. Did he endorse that? I am, or I am people doubt, were just doing exactly. I am doubtful that he done against his name. Uh, yes, I am doubtful that he would would have sanctioned that. But the thing is that the low rank, obviously, he was uh, he was not in senior rank, so sort of middle to low rank, and therefore they just went on a rampage. So there were things that would have probably been done without his. Uh, that, that, the whole nation was. That is the most. That is the, the most whole um, nation was intrigue, in um, complex nature of presidency because sometimes you come into power, you have your values, you have your qualities and all that, and then people start misbehaving. Yes. Around it, you, it really and went then they will start control. pointing fingers that your leadership is not good. But yes. maybe you don't even have. The great yeah, total control, total yeah, control yeah. of what is happening. So, but I think that I think that the problem was that when you have the ex head of state being shot at firing squad, mm -hmm. you had judges uh, disappearing mm -hmm. and all these type of things or being killed. Mm -hmm. Then, in a way, it kind of sets the tone mm -hmm. for people. I remember. And it gives you a bad picture. Uh -huh. you know, I remember you... on one occasion that this tall soldier who came into our house mm -hmm. just because my daddy's uh, driver had uh, used the the the, 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 I think it was like a pickup. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> with all that, mm -hmm. he, he used it and he, he didn't bring in any sale. He didn't get paid and he got a soldier uh -huh. to come into the house with a big uh, thing, like a bazooka. Let's continue this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's continue this. So, so it was a rampage. Watch out for the next yeah, um, it, it series. A... Please subscribe, yeah. like, and share. Put your comments below. And if there are any questions, we will answer them. Thank you for Thank watching. You. Thank you. Thank you.